The universe is a vast and enigmatic realm filled with phenomena that continually challenge our comprehension. From the intricate workings of quantum mechanics to the perplexing nature of black holes, the cosmos offers a myriad of puzzling paradoxes that push the boundaries of our understanding. This video serves as a window into the complexities of the universe, highlighting the mysteries and surreal paradoxes that persist despite our best efforts to unravel them. Remarkably, what we currently understand about the universe represents just a mere 5% of its entirety. The familiar matter we encounter daily, comprising protons, neutrons and electrons, accounts for only a fraction of this small percentage. The remaining 95% of the universe is shrouded in mystery, composed of entities we cannot directly perceive, comprehend or even fully conceptualize. This vast unknown is divided into two distinct components, dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter and dark energy stand as two perplexing concepts within the realm of astrophysics, introduced by scientists to explain anomalous observations within the cosmos. Dark matter, constituting 27% of the universe, eludes detection by conventional means as it does not interact with light or any other form of electromagnetic radiation. Despite its elusive nature, its gravitational influence on visible matter, such as stars and galaxies, allows scientists to infer its existence. Comprising approximately 85% of total matter in the universe, dark matter's composition remains a tantalizing enigma. Unlike the familiar particles composing ordinary matter such as protons and electrons, dark matter behaves in a fundamentally different manner. Various theories have been proposed to elucidate its nature, ranging from hypothetical particles that evade interaction with light to the possibility of its composition consisting of exotic entities like black holes. Dark energy is a theoretical type of energy believed to fill all of space and is responsible for the universe's accelerating expansion. Unlike dark matter, which slows down the universe's expansion due to its gravitational pull, dark energy has a repulsive force that speeds up this expansion. While we don't fully understand dark energy, Scientists think it's a property inherent to space itself, rather than a substance we can directly detect. Scientists estimate that dark energy makes up approximately 68% of the total energy in the universe. When it comes to the dimensions of the universe, our current understanding is based on four dimensions. Three spatial dimensions, length, width and height, and one dimension of time. This four-dimensional space-time framework is widely accepted. However, some advanced theories like string theory suggest there could be more dimensions, possibly up to 11 in total. These extra dimensions, if they exist, are believed to be compacted or curled up so small that they're imperceptible at our scale. While we can't directly observe them, their influence on observable phenomena hints at their existence. These extra dimensions would play a crucial role in unifying the mathematical descriptions of the four fundamental forces of nature the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, the electromagnetic force, and gravity. The question remains, do these higher dimensions truly exist? And if so, can we ever detect or measure them, or will they forever remain beyond our reach within our four-dimensional world? Consider the notion that our universe might just be one among many. This idea, known as the multiverse theory, is a prominent concept in modern cosmology and physics it suggests the existence of numerous other universes alongside our own, each governed by its own distinct laws of physics and possessing unique characteristics. If this theory holds true, it would significantly impact our understanding of the universe and our role within it. For instance, it could provide insight into why our universe seems finely tuned to support life, a concept referred to as the anthropic principle. With multiple universes possessing different physical laws, the likelihood of at least one being conducive to life increases. Moreover, the multiverse theory prompts us to contemplate the nature of reality and the criteria for defining what is real. If multiple universes exist with varying physical laws, do they all hold equal reality? Or is our universe the sole true reality? Turning to the concept of time, it stands as one of the most challenging properties of our universe to grasp. Time is understood as a measurable continuum devoid of spatial dimensions. Despite its seemingly linear flow with an apparent direction, time's passage restricts us from traveling backward. 
Are we bound within the forward march of time indefinitely? Furthermore, does time's progression intertwine with the fundamental workings of our universe? According to the Big Bang theory, time itself commenced alongside the birth of the universe roughly 13.8 billion years ago. Does this imply that pondering what existed before holds no relevance? Time is an important idea in physics, describing how events progress from the past through the present to the future. It's like a dimension where things happen, often pictured as a continuous line. In physics, we measure time using units like seconds, minutes, hours and years. Time is also part of the space-time continuum, which is the universe's four-dimensional framework made up of three spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension. Time usually moves forward and can't go backward. It's a one-way street, often called the arrow of time. This idea connects with the second law of thermodynamics, which says that disorder or entropy generally increases over time in a closed system. The nature of time is still being studied and debated in both physics and philosophy. Some theories suggest that time emerges from the complex interactions of the universe's basic parts, while others argue that time is a fundamental aspect of the universe, similar to space and matter. In certain situations, there's a fascinating phenomenon in physics where two particles can seem to be instantly connected, even if they're far apart in the universe. It's called quantum entanglement, and it means that the state of one particle is immediately linked with the state of the other, regardless of the distance between them. Although this might sound like it breaks the rules of nature, it's actually in line with the principles of quantum mechanics. However, it's crucial to understand that this doesn't enable us to communicate faster than light or break the law of causality. Even though the entangled particles are correlated instantly, we can't manipulate this connection to transmit information at speeds exceeding the speed of light. In quantum mechanics, there's a fundamental concept called the no communication theorem, which firmly states that using entanglement for faster than light communication is impossible. So, while quantum entanglement is indeed a strange and mysterious phenomenon, it doesn't defy the laws of nature or causality principles. It raises intriguing possibilities, but for now, it doesn't offer a means to transmit information instantly over vast distances. Take a moment to ponder. Could we possibly be alone in the vast expanse of the universe? Consider this. There are over two trillion galaxies within the observable universe, each containing countless stars and planets, more than the total number of grains of sand on Earth. With such immense cosmic real estate, one might wonder, where is everyone? Why haven't we encountered any signs of life beyond Earth? Is life exceptionally rare, or does it perhaps have a limited lifespan, extinguishing itself before venturing out to explore other realms? Contemplating this raises profound questions about the future of humanity. The inquiry into whether we stand alone in the universe ranks among the most captivating and significant queries we can pose. Consider the vast expanse and age of the universe, and it seems improbable that Earth stands alone as the sole planet capable of nurturing life. Within our galaxy alone, there could be billions of planets harboring conditions conducive to life. Yet, despite this potential, the absence of concrete evidence of extraterrestrial life poses a puzzling conundrum known as the Fermi Paradox. Numerous theories attempt to address the Fermi Paradox. Some suggest that life might be rare, while others propose that it struggles to evolve beyond certain stages or that intelligent civilizations self-destruct before venturing far into the cosmos. Additionally, it's plausible that our current methods of searching for extraterrestrial life are simply inadequate and more advanced techniques in the future could unveil evidence of life beyond Earth. Now consider the self-reference problem. Humans, as inhabitants of the universe, are not impartial observers when we gaze at the stars and galaxies. We are both the observers and the observed. This self-referential aspect raises questions about our ability to maintain neutrality when exploring the universe. Could our embeddedness within the cosmos distort our perception and lead to misconceptions about the universe's nature? The self-reference problem poses a significant challenge in how we understand and perceive the universe. Unlike impartial observers, we're deeply intertwined within it. This issue can skew our view of the universe as we may unknowingly impose our own beliefs onto what we observe. For instance, 
we might prioritize phenomena that directly affect us rather than taking a broader and more objective approach. To address this, it's crucial to recognize our biases and limitations. By doing so, we can develop more rigorous and impartial methods for observing and analyzing the universe. Now, let's explore why the universe appears tailor-made for life. It's striking how certain fundamental constants like the speed of light align in a way that allows life to thrive. One idea is that there may be countless universes with varied conditions, and we happen to reside in one that's conducive to life. This concept hints at the possibility of an infinite array of universes, each with its own unique properties. Several explanations exist for the apparent fine-tuning of the universe. One such explanation is the anthropic principle. This principle suggests that the universe's conditions align with the existence of observers, us. Put simply, the universe seems finely tuned for us because if it weren't, we wouldn't be here to notice it. This concept is often termed the selection effect. Consider this. Why is it simpler to break something than to mend it? Entropy plays a key role here. Entropy refers to the level of disorder or randomness in a system. It's a universal truth that entropy can never decrease. Everything in the universe gradually moves towards disorder. For instance, it's effortless to shatter a window, but reconstructing it exactly as it was is practically impossible. This is because the principle of entropy drives the universe from order to chaos, from a structured state to disorder. Now, what does this mean for the destiny of the universe? As the universe keeps expanding, it will eventually reach a state of maximum entropy. In this state, all matter will be uniformly spread out and there won't be any energy gradient available to drive further processes. This scenario is referred to as the heat death of the universe, where the universe will be cold, dark and devoid of life. While the universe isn't entirely closed as it receives energy from stars and other sources, the overall trend is towards increased disorder and chaos. However, it's crucial to understand that this process will unfold over an immensely long time span, likely spanning trillions of years into the future. Let's delve into the intriguing question, can anything escape from a black hole? We've observed the effects of these mysterious cosmic entities, and we've even directly seen one. Black holes exert an incredibly strong gravitational force that pulls everything towards them, including light itself. But what occurs at the enigmatic, infinitely dense core of a black hole? And could there be counterparts to black holes known as white holes that eject matter and time into our universe? Based on our current understanding of physics, once something crosses the event horizon of a black hole, the point of no return, nothing can escape. The gravitational pull of a black hole is so immense that it distorts space and time. Anything that ventures beyond the event horizon is inevitably drawn toward the singularity at the black hole's center, where the known laws of physics cease to apply. Despite intense study, we remain uncertain about what precisely unfolds at the heart of a black hole, as our current physics theories struggle to explain the conditions there. The prevailing notion is that the matter within the singularity becomes infinitely dense and compressed into a point of zero volume referred to as a singularity. Let's embark on a journey through the cosmos. Initially, nothing existed. Then, approximately 13.7 billion years ago, the universe began to take shape. The mystery of how this occurred, or if there was ever a period before time itself, remains unsolved. However, Physicists have constructed a rough timeline of significant cosmic events using data from telescopes and models of particle physics. From its inception to its eventual end, we explore pivotal moments in the universe's evolution. The universe is boundless. For captivating documentaries about the cosmos, make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay in the loop. The Big Bang marks a moment in time rather than a specific location in space. It represents the first second of time, serving as the reference point from which all subsequent seconds are measured. Contrary to its name, the Big Bang wasn't an explosion, but a phase when the universe was intensely hot and dense before expanding outward in all directions. The Big Bang theory suggests that the universe originated from an infinitely small point of infinite density. However, this concept is a simplified expression as we lack certainty about the events at that time. Our understanding suggests that the laws of physics break down at the moment of the Big Bang, 
because mathematical infinities defy logic in physics equations. Let's take a look at the cosmic inflation era. Following the Big Bang, the universe experienced a period of rapid expansion. This phenomenon, known as inflation, likely caused the universe to grow exponentially, separating regions of space that were previously colliding. While inflation remains primarily theoretical, it has gained traction among cosmologists as a potential explanation for the remarkable uniformity observed across distant parts of the cosmos. Efforts to detect evidence of this expansion in light from the early universe were reported in 2014. However, subsequent investigations revealed that interplanetary dust was responsible for the observed interference, casting doubt on these findings. Then we have quark-gluon plasma. In the moments immediately following the Big Bang, the temperature of the universe soared to between 7 trillion and 10 trillion degrees Fahrenheit, or 4 trillion and 6 trillion degrees Celsius. At such extreme temperatures, quarks, fundamental particles typically confined within protons and neutrons, were liberated to move freely. These quarks joined with gluons, carriers of the strong nuclear force, forming a primordial soup known as quark-gluon plasma. This dense, hot medium permeated the entire universe during its early stages. In laboratories here on Earth, scientists have recreated the extreme conditions found in both early cosmic epochs and terrestrial atom smashers. However, these conditions are notoriously difficult to sustain, lasting only for fractions of a second. In the aftermath of the Big Bang, there was a period of intense activity known as the Early Epic, which began shortly after the initial explosion and lasted for perhaps only a few thousandths of a second. As the universe expanded and cooled, it provided an environment where quarks could merge into protons and neutrons. About one second after the Big Bang, the cosmic neutrino background emerged, although it remains undetected by scientists. This phenomenon occurred when the density of the cosmos had decreased enough for neutrinos to traverse space without interacting with other matter. Within the first three minutes of the universe's existence, the fusion of protons and neutrons produced the hydrogen isotope deuterium along with helium and a small amount of lithium. However, this fusion process ceased as temperatures dropped. Approximately 380,000 years after the Big Bang, as temperatures further cooled, hydrogen and helium atoms were able to combine with free electrons, forming the first neutral atoms. The cosmic microwave background, a relic of this monumental event first detected in 1965, originated when photons, previously entangled with electrons, were able to propagate freely without interference. During the Dark Ages, an extensive period ensued wherein the cosmos remained devoid of any emitted light. This epoch, spanning roughly 100 million years, earned the moniker Cosmic Dark Ages because astronomers heavily rely on starlight to comprehend the universe. Understanding this era poses significant challenges as the absence of stars hinders our ability to discern cosmic events. The genesis of the initial stars occurred approximately 180 million years post-Big Bang when hydrogen and helium coalesced into massive spheres, inducing extreme temperatures at their cores. Following this, the intense photons emitted by these early stars and galaxies fragmented neutral hydrogen atoms within interstellar space into protons and electrons, marking the onset of cosmic dawn or reionization. Pinpointing the exact duration of reionization proves difficult, as it transpired shortly after the Big Bang, with its signal subsequently obscured by intervening gas and dust. Nonetheless, scientists estimate its completion to have occurred around 500 million years after the cosmic explosion. Large-scale structure. About a billion years after the Big Bang, supermassive black holes emerged at the centers of merging early galaxies. These black holes emitted intense quasars, which could be seen from as far as 12 billion light-years away, casting bright beams of light into the universe. The universe's middle years. Over the following few billion years, the cosmos continued to evolve. Regions of higher density in the early universe attracted more material due to gravity, gradually expanding into galaxy clusters and long strands of gas and dust, forming what we now see as a stunning filamentary cosmic web. Birth of the solar system, roughly 4.5 billion years ago in one of the galaxies, a yellow star with rings of gas around it formed from a swirling cloud of gas. 
Over time, these rings coalesced to form the eight planets of our solar system, along with numerous comets, asteroids, dwarf planets, and moons. It's believed that the third planet from the Sun, Earth, either retained a significant amount of water through this process or received water from icy comets later on, contributing to its abundant water supply. Earth and humanity. Around 3.8 to 3.5 billion years ago, tiny primitive bacteria emerged on Earth, transforming over time into remarkable marine creatures and colossal dinosaurs that grazed on foliage. Roughly 200,000 years ago, upright beings with the capacity for contemplation emerged, pondering the vastness of space and delving into the origins of the universe. However, this isn't the final chapter. Physicists grapple with the enigma of the cosmos's future, which hinges on our ability to understand dark energy, the mysterious force believed to propel the universe's expansion. In a scenario where the universe expands indefinitely, all stars will eventually extinguish, and even black holes will dissipate into nothingness, leaving behind a desolate cosmos brimming with inert energy. Alternatively, if dark energy's influence weakens, a great crunch, which is a reversal of the Big Bang driven by gravitational forces, could occur. Another possibility is the Great Rip, where the universe tears itself apart as dark energy accelerates objects to ever greater distances. If you're still watching, drop a like if you haven't already. In its early stages, the universe presented a vastly different appearance. Gas and dark matter clouds were just beginning to merge under the influence of gravity. This period also marked the emergence of the first stars, primarily composed of hydrogen and helium. Remarkably, during this time, some colossal black holes, boasting masses equivalent to one billion times that of the Sun, had already formed. According to the conventional model of black hole formation and growth, it would take billions of years for a black hole to reach such massive proportions. However, since the universe is less than one billion years old, the presence of these enormous black holes challenges existing theories. How did these immense black holes form so quickly? How did they accumulate such immense mass in such a short period? This new revelation prompts us to reconsider our understanding of the birth of black holes mere millions of years after the universe's inception. Let's start with a brief explanation of what a quasar is. Essentially, it's a supermassive black hole that's spinning rapidly and feasting on plasma at the center of a distant galaxy. This phenomenon is called an active galactic nucleus. Quasars are incredibly powerful and luminous entities in the universe, often shining billions of times brighter than our Milky Way galaxy. Now, the intriguing part is, what makes them so incredibly strong? Quasars tend to be located in galaxies with exceptionally high amounts of gas. As this gas gets drawn into the black hole in such a densely packed region, it heats up while swirling around the event horizon. This intense heat causes the gas to emit radiation across various frequencies, making quasars highly luminous. Typically, quasars are only found in very distant galaxies because local supermassive black holes don't usually have such copious amounts of gas. Even the closest known quasar, Markarian 231, is still about 600 million light years away. So, the big question is, how do these magnificent celestial structures come into existence? Currently, there are two main ideas explaining how black holes form. The first, and most widely accepted theory suggests that when a massive star reaches the end of its life, it collapses in on itself, forming a black hole with a mass of up to around 100 times that of the Sun. Over time, this black hole can grow larger by consuming nearby matter, eventually becoming supermassive, with a mass millions to billions of times greater than that of the Sun. However, experts argue that even with half a billion years, a black hole couldn't accumulate enough matter to reach a mass equivalent to a billion suns. This limitation arises because as matter falls into the black hole, it forms a swirling disk called an accretion disk around it. The material in this disk accelerates to speeds close to that of light due to gravitational forces, causing the disk to heat up and emit various types of radiation. This radiation exerts a powerful force that pushes away surrounding matter, slowing down the rate at which the black hole can consume mass. This restriction on the rate of growth is known as the Eddington mass, and it sets a theoretical upper limit on how fast a black hole can accumulate mass. Even if a black hole can consume matter at a rate exceeding its limit, 
the process is likely to encounter strong resistance. The accumulation of matter would be hindered as powerful gusts blow away nearby material. These variables effectively cap the rate at which a black hole can grow. If this scenario unfolds, it contradicts the notion that quasars formed through conventional means in the early universe. Now, let's explore an alternative hypothesis regarding the origin of quasars. According to this hypothesis, black holes with masses up to 100,000 times that of the Sun formed from the collapse of short-lived stars, some possibly with lifespans of nearly 250,000 years. Since these black holes were so massive, they could have rapidly accumulated billions of times the Sun's mass in a relatively short period. Additionally, estimates suggest that the initial mass of a quasar must fall within the range of 10,000 to 100,000 times the mass of the Sun, supporting this hypothesis. However, for such a black hole to form, the parent star would need to be exceptionally massive, potentially tens of thousands of times more massive than the Sun. Yet, no such enormous stars have been observed in the observable universe. Even the largest star ever discovered is only about 300 times the size of the Sun. Moreover, there's currently no known process capable of creating stars with masses significantly larger than that of the Sun. However, it's important to recognize that conditions in the early universe differed from those we observe today. Computer simulations suggest that under these early conditions, it's possible for massive stars to have formed, albeit rarely. These stars may have emerged at points where dense and turbulent streams of cold gas intersected. For stars to form in such conditions, unusual circumstances would have been necessary, such as intense ultraviolet radiation or rapid movements between gas and dark matter at supersonic speeds. However, none of the regions where these unusual conditions might have existed resemble those where the first quasars were discovered. So, how do we explain the appearance of quasars? Scientists turn to simulations to find answers. Typically, a new star forms when a dense mass within a cool cloud collapses under the cloud's own gravitational pull. However, if there's significant turbulence, this collapse may not occur. Instead, the simulation suggests that the turbulence at the intersection of the streams prevented the formation of typical stars like those we see today. Instead, the cloud expanded so much that it violently fragmented into two massive stars, each nearly 31,000 and 40,000 times the mass of the Sun. Now, let's delve into the fascinating realm of extraterrestrial life. Are aliens real? Do they exist? And if they do, what might they look like? We'll explore these questions and more, uncovering various theories and facts about these enigmatic beings. One intriguing aspect we'll discuss is the possibility of supermassive black holes, billions of times the mass of the Sun, forming and expanding within just a few hundred million years. This phenomenon could occur if gas from streams continues to fuel surrounding clouds. Surprisingly, this suggests that even without extraordinary circumstances, these colossal black holes could have emerged at the intersections of gas streams. If the numbers align, it's estimated that around 200 quasars were born within the first billion years of the universe's existence. This revelation leads to a remarkable conclusion. As Daniel Whalen, one of the authors of the study, aptly puts it, the first supermassive black holes were merely a natural result of structure formation in cold, dark matter cosmologies, offspring of the cosmic web. Indeed, this concept is truly astonishing. Let's explore a few theories regarding the existence of aliens. Extraterrestrial life exists. This theory proposes that life exists beyond Earth, possibly even within our own solar system. For instance, microbial life could potentially thrive on Mars or some of the moons orbiting Jupiter and Saturn. Moreover, it's conceivable that more complex life forms, including intelligent civilizations, may inhabit planets orbiting distant stars. The Fermi Paradox The Fermi Paradox raises the question, if intelligent life is widespread in the universe, why haven't we detected any evidence of it? Various explanations have been proposed. Some suggest that intelligent civilizations might self-destruct before we can make contact, while others propose that they're simply too distant or uninterested in communicating with us. Ancient Aliens this theory posits that extraterrestrial beings visited Earth in the past and played a role in shaping human history and culture. 
Advocates of this idea often cite ancient artwork and texts as evidence of alien intervention. These theories offer intriguing possibilities about the existence of aliens, sparking curiosity and prompting further exploration into the mysteries of the cosmos. UFO sightings. UFOs, or unidentified flying objects, are frequently mentioned as potential evidence of alien visitation. While many sightings can be attributed to natural phenomena or human-made objects, there are some that defy explanation and could possibly indicate encounters with extraterrestrial beings. The simulation theory. This intriguing concept suggests that our reality might actually be a computer-generated simulation crafted by an advanced civilization. Although not directly related to aliens, proponents of this theory speculate that the creators of the simulation could potentially be an extraterrestrial civilization. Let's begin by exploring a fundamental question. Do aliens exist? According to the Drake equation proposed by astronomer Frank Drake in 1961, the likelihood of intelligent life existing elsewhere in the universe is significant. This equation considers factors such as the number of stars in our galaxy, the potential habitability of planets, and the probability of life emerging on those planets. Based on these factors, the Drake equation suggests that there could be millions of intelligent civilizations within our galaxy alone. However, the question remains, have we ever encountered these civilizations? Many people believe we have, and there are numerous accounts of alien sightings, abductions and encounters. Yet, solid evidence to substantiate these claims is scarce. Now, let's delve into some popular theories regarding the appearance of aliens. The stereotypical depiction of aliens as small, green and large-eyed creatures stems from popular culture. However, it's improbable that aliens would resemble this portrayal. In reality, predicting the appearance of aliens is challenging as it would depend on the environmental conditions of their home planet. For instance, if an alien species evolved on a planet with high gravity, they might have shorter, sturdier bodies. Conversely, if they evolved on a world with harsh radiation, they might possess adaptations to withstand such conditions. Additionally, some alien species might not even have physical bodies as we understand them. They could exist as pure energy or as part of a collective consciousness. Now, let's explore why aliens might visit Earth. There are several possible explanations. Some scientists speculate that aliens could be drawn to our planet because of its unique position in the universe. Earth resides in what's known as the Goldilocks Zone, a region where conditions are just right for life to flourish. Aliens may be curious about studying Earth to understand how life thrives in such conditions. Additionally, they might be interested in establishing contact with us. Given the potential existence of millions of intelligent civilizations in the galaxy, it's conceivable that some are attempting to communicate with us. However, their methods of communication could be vastly different from our own, making it challenging for us to comprehend. So, how should we respond if we ever encounter aliens? Many scientists advocate for caution in any encounter with extraterrestrial beings. It's essential to avoid sudden movements or aggressive actions that could be misinterpreted by the aliens. Instead, we should approach the situation with care and openness to foster peaceful communication and understanding. Instead, our approach to communication with aliens should prioritize peace and non-aggression. If we were to establish contact with extraterrestrial beings, it could profoundly impact our understanding of the universe. Such an encounter might challenge our perceptions of our place in the cosmos and compel us to grapple with significant existential questions about life, the universe and everything in between. Now, let's shift our focus to the Fermi Paradox, a thought-provoking concept that raises a perplexing question. If there are countless intelligent civilizations in the universe, why haven't we encountered any evidence of them? Why haven't we detected any signals or observed spacecraft from other worlds? One plausible explanation is that advanced civilizations have a tendency to self-destruct. As societies advance technologically, they also face heightened risks of destruction, whether through environmental degradation, conflict, or other catastrophic events. It's conceivable that many intelligent civilizations reach a critical juncture where they become unsustainable and ultimately collapse. Another potential explanation is that advanced civilizations may have little interest in contacting us. They might not find Earth intriguing or see the value in communicating with other species. 
Alternatively, they could be situated too far away for us to detect their signals, and our technology might be too rudimentary to pick up theirs. Despite these possibilities, the Fermi paradox remains an enigma, sparking considerable speculation and debate. However, let's now shift our focus to the prospect of life within our own solar system. While we haven't discovered any signs of intelligent life, there are encouraging indications that microbial life could exist on other planets or moons. For instance, NASA's Mars rover has identified methane on the planet's surface, a potential indicator of microbial activity. Additionally, scientists have uncovered evidence of subsurface oceans on certain moons of Jupiter and Saturn, suggesting they could harbor conditions conducive to life. If we were to discover evidence of microbial life within our own solar system, it would represent a significant breakthrough with profound implications for our understanding of life beyond Earth. Let's explore the potential ramifications of encountering intelligent life. Such an encounter could deeply influence our society and reshape our comprehension of the universe. Firstly, it could prompt us to reassess our existing beliefs and perspectives. We might need to reconsider our notions about our place in the cosmos, our religious and philosophical convictions, and our understanding of the origins of life. Additionally, it could provoke ethical inquiries regarding the appropriate ways to interact with other intelligent species and the ethical responsibilities associated with such interactions. Moreover, encountering an alien civilization could profoundly impact our technological and scientific advancement. Interacting with a more advanced civilization could provide us with valuable insights and knowledge, potentially accelerating our own technological progress. However, it also raises concerns about potential threats if the aliens possess hostile intentions towards us. Determining whether aliens, if they exist, pose a threat to us is challenging. As of now, we lack concrete evidence of intelligent extraterrestrial life, so any speculation about their intentions or behaviors remains purely theoretical. Some argue that aliens could be dangerous if they are more technologically advanced and capable of conquering or harming us. Conversely, others suggest that an advanced civilization capable of space travel may possess a more enlightened understanding of the universe and could potentially be peaceful and cooperative. It's also conceivable that aliens might be indifferent to us, simply observing from afar without any desire to interact. Ultimately, while pondering the potential risks of encountering alien life can be intriguing, the reality is that we lack sufficient information to draw definitive conclusions about their intentions or behaviors. Approaching the search for extraterrestrial life with an open mind and curiosity is essential. Rather than succumbing to fear or paranoia, we should embrace the exploration with a sense of wonder. Despite the uncertainties, the quest for intelligent life persists, we continuously advance our technology and refine our methods to detect signals and evidence of other civilizations. Although the likelihood of discovering intelligent life may be slim, the pursuit of knowledge and discovery remains a noble endeavor in its own right. Could science fiction become reality? The idea of first contact with aliens captivates Hollywood because it could mark the most significant scientific discovery in history. However, the cosmos presents formidable challenges to encountering extraterrestrial life, almost as if it's deliberately hindering our efforts. We're on a quest for answers in the vast expanse of the universe. Will we ever uncover intelligent life beyond Earth, or are we truly alone? The Arecibo Observatory kickstarted our pursuit 45 years ago by beaming a powerful radio message into space, an attempt to initiate first contact. This transmission, headed toward the M13 galaxy cluster located 25,000 light-years away, carries information about Earth, our location, and even the composition of our DNA. Its purpose, to extend a friendly greeting and pose the question, are we alone? But what are the chances of an intelligent alien civilization receiving our message? Do we believe intelligent life exists elsewhere in the universe? The answer is a resounding yes. Considering life emerged on Earth shortly after its formation, it's plausible that it arose elsewhere too. So, how many extraterrestrial civilizations might we contact? Astronomer Frank Drake devised an equation to help address this pressing question. The Drake equation is a fascinating attempt to use math to estimate the likelihood of life existing beyond Earth. Initially, it suggested there could be around 10,000 intelligent civilizations in our galaxy. 
However, since its development, our understanding of the galaxy has evolved significantly, particularly with the discovery of exoplanets, planets beyond our solar system. With over 4,000 exoplanets identified and new techniques constantly uncovering more, scientists believe this is just the beginning. Considering the abundance of exoplanets, it's plausible that the conditions for life exist throughout the universe. While life may be rare, the vast number of planets offers numerous opportunities for its emergence. Consequently, it's entirely feasible that the cosmos teems with life, including countless sophisticated extraterrestrial civilizations. This isn't merely speculation, it's based on basic probability. There's a high likelihood of diverse alien cultures existing out there. So, why haven't we encountered any other civilizations yet? One reason could be the immense size of the universe. Our solar system is located in the suburbs of the Milky Way, about 75,000 light years from its edge. Radio signals which travel at the speed of light would take 75,000 years to reach the other side of the galaxy. Considering the vast distances between stars, even if there are 10,000 civilizations in the galaxy, it's possible that the sheer expanse of space makes communication between them unfeasible. Imagine if, 45 years ago, we decided to send a message into space with the hope of contacting potential extraterrestrial life. Well, that message is still on its journey, cruising at the speed of light. But here's the catch. The destination we're aiming for is a staggering 25,000 light years away. The enormity of the universe poses a significant challenge to initiating contact, making it difficult to connect with any potential alien civilizations. The laws of physics act as a barrier, preventing radio signals from traversing such immense distances. Unfortunately, we can't surpass the cosmic speed limit of light, so even if there are fascinating civilizations out there in our galaxy, they remain frustratingly out of reach. It's disheartening, but the sheer vastness of the universe presents a formidable obstacle. However, we're not giving up just yet. We're harnessing cutting-edge technology on Earth to enhance our search efforts. Enter the Breakthrough Listen project, an ambitious endeavor employing state-of-the-art facilities worldwide, including radio and optical telescopes. Together, they form a formidable team scanning the sky. Their focus? The closest one million stars and 100 galaxies, marking it as the most extensive search for extraterrestrial signals to date. Imagine this. If there happens to be an alien spacecraft lurking around any of the 1,000 nearest stars to us, the Breakthrough Listen project is on it like a detective on a case. They've got the necessary tools to capture any signals, ensuring we don't miss out on a potential intergalactic conversation. Pretty cool, huh? Think of Breakthrough. Listen as a cosmic detective, diligently scanning for any signs from outer space. Currently, they're focusing their attention on eavesdropping on the closest 17 stars to us, hoping to catch something intriguing. However, it's been rather quiet on the signal front so far. It's a bit like waiting for a phone call that never arrives. Frustrating, especially since we haven't stumbled upon any evidence of alien civilizations yet. But here's the thing, just because we haven't picked up any signals doesn't necessarily mean they're not out there. Breakthrough Listen is only just embarking on its mission, and there's a vast expanse of space in the universe left to explore. Picture it like searching for a needle in a cosmic haystack, it requires an abundance of patience. Let's break down some space math. Using Drake's equation, which estimates there could be 10,000 intelligent civilizations out there, consider this. Our galaxy alone boasts around 250 billion stars. That's akin to searching for one specific house in a city filled with 25 million houses, a monumental task reminiscent of making countless Brazilian cold calls. The universe is incredibly vast, which means we might have to wait an exceptionally long time before detecting any signals from alien civilizations. And even if we do pick up something, it could be too late. Picture receiving a message from someone, but they sent it ages ago, and by the time it reaches you, they could already be history. So, are we fashionably late to the cosmic party? Could it be that some aliens have already come and gone without our notice? Despite Earth's impressive age of over 4.5 billion years, allowing us to evolve into an intelligent species, in the grand scheme of the universe, we're mere cosmic toddlers. 
It has taken all this time for humanity to become the sophisticated, tech-savvy civilization we are today. Here's the scoop. There are star systems out there that have been around longer than us. Wrap your head around this. The universe itself is a massive 13.8 billion years old. We often pat ourselves on the back because we can build rockets and mess around with radio waves. But if we came across a civilization that's been around much longer than us, they'd likely be light years ahead in technology. Now let's talk about measuring how advanced a civilization might be. It's called the Kardashev scale, and it's pretty neat. It categorizes civilizations into three types based on their ability to harness energy from their surroundings. Type 1 can only use the energy of its home planet, Type 2 could potentially tap into the energy of its entire solar system, and Type 3, well, they're the big shots who could harness the power of a whole galaxy. Here's the reality check. We're not even a Type 1 civilization. We're somewhere between 0 and 1 on the scale. We haven't quite mastered the ability to fully utilize all of Earth's resources, so we're sitting at a modest 0 0.7. But hey, we're giving it our best shot to catch up with our cosmic neighbors. Just imagine an advanced civilization hitting Kardashev level 2 or 3. These folks could construct mind-blowing structures that tap into the power of a star, like massive solar panels enveloping the entire star, a concept first proposed by Freeman Dyson. These fascinating structures are known as Dyson spheres. Now, if other star systems or even entire galaxies boast these remarkable Dyson spheres, could we catch a glimpse and finally establish contact with these advanced beings? Let's dive into what Dyson spheres are all about. They essentially block out almost all the light from a star, except for some sneaky infrared light. Why? Well, because those panels are busy soaking up sunlight, which heats them up, and when things warm up, they emit thermal infrared light. So how do we play cosmic detectives in this scenario? We scan the skies for this distinct thermal infrared signature to locate Dyson spheres. In 2015, NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer combed through 100,000 nearby galaxies in search of these advanced civilizations. However, they came up empty-handed. But here's the cosmic puzzle. The universe is incredibly ancient, right? So, shouldn't other civilizations have had ample time to evolve? Well, perhaps we simply haven't noticed them yet. Picture this. They're out there attempting to send us a message, but it's like they're knocking on our door before our house is even built. Earth has been around for less than a third of the universe's 13.8 billion years, and humans? We've only been strutting our stuff for a mere 300,000 years. That's a tiny window in the grand scheme of the cosmos to make that initial contact. Imagine trying to join a party, but you arrive fashionably late, only to find out the party has been going on for ages. This notion ties into the hypothesis of natural filters in the universe, suggesting that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations might have existed for a long time, but were wiped out by these filters. If we consider the existence of extraterrestrial life, it raises the question of whether their forms and environments would resemble those found on Earth. This concept stems from the idea that certain conditions, be they astrophysical, biological or societal, act as filters that restrict the emergence and longevity of advanced civilizations. These filters could include catastrophic events, astrophysical phenomena, or self-destructive behaviors inherent to intelligent societies. If we were to encounter extraterrestrial life, it's possible that their forms and environments would differ from those on Earth. Life could evolve in various ways depending on the specific conditions of each planet, Given the diversity of planetary environments and life's adaptability, it's conceivable that extraterrestrial beings might possess different biochemistries and physical characteristics. Rocky planets like Earth are seen as prime candidates for hosting life because of their unique conditions. However, these planets are delicate and vulnerable to various threats, which could swiftly eliminate intelligent life from the universe. One major danger comes from violent stellar events known as gamma-ray bursts, capable of sterilizing planets across vast cosmic distances and potentially impacting entire galaxies. Picture this. A massive star explodes in our galaxy, the Milky Way, unleashing a deadly burst of energy aimed toward our planet. This is a gamma-ray burst, an immense blast akin to the Big Bang. There are no warning signs, and then it hits. The radiation heats up the upper atmosphere, causing the ozone layer to thin out across the globe. 
humans would suffer lethal radiation exposure 100 times over. As the ozone layer diminishes, global temperatures soar, leading to severe storms, tsunamis and hurricanes. Most life on land and in water would be incinerated. While it might sound like a plot from a sci-fi movie, if a gamma ray burst from 100 light years away struck Earth, this catastrophic scenario could become a reality. Even if intelligent species manage to survive natural occurrences, there's another risk, self-destruction. Looking at our own earthly experiences, technological advancements have given us the ability to alter our climate and create devastating weapons. This self-destructive potential is a serious concern for advanced civilizations. It's possible that technologically advanced societies may have short lifespans. Just like in our history, the brevity of advanced civilizations might explain why there are so few observable ones currently. Many civilizations may have emerged, but perished quickly due to self-inflicted challenges. This scarcity of long-lasting civilizations could be why we have limited opportunities for communication with extraterrestrial beings. Discovering remnants of an extinct alien civilization could serve as a significant warning for humanity. Finding evidence of a civilization that destroyed itself through pollution or conflict would mirror our potential future. This realization could offer valuable lessons for us on Earth, highlighting the importance of avoiding similar pitfalls as we explore the cosmos. We can only hope that some advanced alien species have navigated the universe's challenges, offering hope for long-term survival and prosperity. If we're fortunate, there might be an extraterrestrial civilization that visits us in the future. The idea of making contact with aliens sounds exciting, doesn't it? But let's pause and consider. Are we assuming too much? We tend to imagine aliens based on life on Earth, assuming they live on planets like ours. However, most of the universe may not adhere to our life and planet rules. So could extraterrestrials even survive first contact with us and our planet? In July 2019, a satellite on a test mission discovered a new alien world called GJ357D, located about 31 light years away. This super-Earth is more than six times heavier than our familiar home planet. Now, what exactly is a super-Earth? It's essentially a rocky planet like ours, but with a lot more mass. With more mass comes stronger gravity, leading to a completely different environment compared to Earth. Just imagine aliens living on a super-Earth. The gravity there could be incredibly powerful. They might not be tall, but they'd likely be incredibly strong. Super-Earths are just one example of the many fascinating phenomena the universe has to offer. Who knows what other surprises are waiting out there? The possibilities are as vast as the cosmos itself. The universe is a vast playground filled with planets of all shapes and sizes, orbiting stars of various types and sizes, forming countless configurations. This diversity opens up a world of possibilities for life that is far richer and more varied than we ever imagined. However, we need to let go of the notion that extraterrestrial life will resemble us. If we're expecting beings with two legs and similar features to ours, we might as well abandon that idea. The truth is, life out there could be incredibly different. Let's consider a scenario. An intelligent alien species in our cosmic neighborhood wants to reach out to us. But here's the twist. If that alien evolved on a super-Earth or orbited a red star instead of a yellow one like our sun, its biology could be so different that it might never set foot or tentacle on our planet. When we look at life on Earth, it seems perfectly suited to our specific temperature, elements and environment. But imagine an exoplanet with conditions favorable for life. It could still harbor life forms vastly different from what we're used to. What if an alien world had more potassium, was warmer than our average Earth, or had a thicker atmosphere? Each of these subtle differences could create an entirely unique ecosystem. So, the big question arises, can an alien organism truly adapt to our ecosystem upon arriving on Earth? It's a cosmic mystery waiting to be unraveled. The Earth owes much of its livability to its oceans, which play a crucial role in supporting life. Without these oceans, life as we know it would be impossible. While we once thought Earth's oceans were unique, recent discoveries have shown that oceans are not exclusive to our planet. Surprisingly, similar oceans have been discovered in various locations within our solar system. Scientists are embarking on an extraordinary journey to explore unlikely places in search of new forms of life. 
It's truly fascinating how life continually surprises us with its remarkable ability to thrive in unexpected places. Water is of paramount importance in this regard, guiding scientists in their quest for life in our solar system. All living things require water. It's a fundamental requirement for life on Earth. Oceans, as suitable environments, provide the necessary conditions for life to emerge and survive. Wherever we find water on Earth, whether in freezing cold or scorching hot environments, we also find life. Considering this, scientists have set a straightforward guideline for the hunt for extraterrestrial life, locate a liquid ocean. Initially within our solar system, it appeared that there were no such oceans beyond Earth. The concept of the Goldilocks zone proposed that a planet must be at just the right distance from the Sun for water to exist in a liquid state on its surface. Earth fit the bill perfectly while Venus was too hot due to its proximity to the Sun and Mars was deemed too distant. The exploration of the possibility of water on Mars has captured the interest of scientists and space enthusiasts alike. The Red Planet, with its barren and desolate surface, has long been a focal point of planetary exploration. In recent years, the quest to find signs of liquid water or evidence of its past existence has gained momentum. This pursuit is not merely a scientific curiosity, it holds the key to unlocking the mysteries of Mars's past and present and potentially revealing the existence of extraterrestrial life. Despite our extensive knowledge about Mars accumulated over decades of exploration, the current evidence suggests that Mars is dry, cold and seemingly devoid of life. However, the question arises, has Mars always been this way? Interestingly, scientists are searching for evidence of an ancient Martian ocean in one of the driest places on Earth, the Atacama Desert in Chile. The link between Mars and the Atacama Desert lies in their extreme dryness. Mars is renowned for its arid conditions, while the Atacama is one of the driest places on our planet. Interestingly, the relative humidity measured by the Curiosity rover on Mars is nearly identical to that experienced in the Atacama Desert. This surprising similarity in dryness has made the Atacama an ideal location for constructing one of the world's largest telescopes. Water vapor in the atmosphere can greatly interfere with the telescope's ability to detect water and other substances. Since scientists are specifically searching for water and organic materials, they opt for locations devoid of these elements, such as deserts, to minimize contamination during atmospheric observations. When using a telescope to observe Mars, it becomes apparent that there is indeed water on the planet, mainly frozen solid at the poles. However, the Martian landscape indicates past interactions with liquid water, prompting questions about the volume of water that once flowed on the planet's surface. The unraveling of this mystery began in 1984, with a fortunate discovery made in another desert, Antarctica, known as the coldest place on Earth. Scientists made an incredible discovery when they found a meteorite from Mars. By carefully studying this meteorite, which was a staggering 4.5 billion years old, they gained valuable insights into Mars' watery past. This meteorite contained important chemical information and a fixed isotopic signature that revealed the amount of water present on Mars billions of years ago. While this signature may seem small, its significance became clear when scientists compared it with the isotopic signatures of recent Martian rocks, allowing them to determine the planet's current water content and unlock a treasure trove of information. The enormous telescope plays a crucial role in this discovery. With its remarkable power, it can detect water molecules on Mars's surface. Armed with precise measurements of the planet's present water content, scientists were able to make an astonishing calculation. By tracing back in time, they concluded that Mars had nearly seven times more water in the past than it does today. To understand this change, scientists examined Mars's landscape. The planet has low plains in the north and high altitude plains in the south. Given this topography, if water were to flow, it would naturally move towards the lower northern plains. Around 4.5 billion years ago, Mars boasted a vast ocean covering 19% of its surface, similar in size to the Mediterranean Sea. Planetary models depict Mars during its prime, with a warm climate and an atmosphere resembling Earth's. Picture arriving in an alien spacecraft on Earth, chances are you'd land in water. Early Mars shared this watery characteristic, earning it the title of a water world. 
it was a world potentially teeming with life, even boasting waves twice as tall as those on Earth thanks to Mars's lower gravity, a surfer's dream. In its early days, Mars, with its water and thicker atmosphere, resembled an Arctic ocean, icy and frigid. Surprisingly, despite being farther from the Sun than Earth, 4.5 billion years ago marked Mars's most hospitable era, akin to Earth during its early stages. Interestingly, this was when life began to emerge on our planet. However, despite its promising conditions, Mars's early ocean met a tragic fate over 1.5 billion years. The Martian atmosphere succumbed to solar radiation, evaporating away and leaving behind only ice frozen at the poles. This raises the intriguing question. Could life have thrived in that ancient Martian ocean? And if so, could anything have survived to the present day? The key to understanding Mars lies in the search for liquid water on the planet. Since 2012, the Curiosity rover has played a crucial role in this exploration. Through its mission, we've been treated to breathtaking images like the striking blue sunset, challenging our perceptions of the red planet. Additionally, pictures from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, particularly those of the Newton Crater, offer further insights into the existence of liquid water on Mars. Time-lapse sequences have revealed streaks on the crater walls, hinting at the presence of water, although in smaller amounts compared to Earth's oceans or Mars' ancient water world. This ongoing pursuit of liquid water on Mars opens the door to the exciting possibility of discovering life beyond our home planet. Mars's unique conditions are heavily influenced by its axial tilt, or the angle at which it tilts on its axis. Unlike Earth, which is stabilized by the Moon's gravitational pull, Mars lacks a large moon and is closer to Jupiter. As a result, Mars experiences a significant wobble in its axis, more than double that of Earth's over 100,000 years. Mars's tilt can vary by as much as 10 degrees, leading to drastic climate changes akin to, but more extreme than Earth's ice ages. These harsh conditions, combined with the absence of a stabilizing factor like Earth's moon, pose significant challenges for the potential survival of life on the Martian surface. Our solar system can be a tough place to live. Volcanoes wreak havoc everywhere, from the icy eruptions of Saturn's moon Enceladus to the fiery lava fields of Jupiter's moon Io, and even here on our own planet Earth. Volcanoes play a dual role, they both create and destroy. Thanks to today's advanced spacecraft and observatories, We've uncovered volcanoes on planets we once thought were lifeless. Discovering volcanoes on a celestial body smaller than the moon was a big surprise. This raises the question, if there are volcanoes on other worlds, could there also be life? Volcanoes are some of the most powerful natural events on Earth. They form new land, erase the old and release gases that change our atmosphere. Deep in our oceans, volcanic activity provides energy for unique new life forms. Volcanoes play a vital role in supporting life on Earth, and now we're searching for signs of life elsewhere in the universe. We know that life needs water and energy, and this is where volcanoes come in. They produce immense amounts of energy. If we find volcanoes on other planets, it could lead us to discover life. The search begins with the planet closest to Earth, Venus, a planet that shares many similarities with our own. Venus and Earth have a lot in common. About three billion years ago, both planets were quite similar, with new land, oceans and a suitable atmosphere for life. However, something went wrong on Venus, causing its history to take a dramatically different path from Earth's. Venus took a turn for the worse a long time ago, becoming our malevolent twin planet. Today, the surface of Venus is scorching hot, reaching temperatures as high as 900 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt some metals. So, it's basically impossible for life to exist there. Venus is like a greenhouse, a world blanketed with a thick atmosphere containing lots of carbon dioxide. This CO2 traps heat from the sun, making the planet incredibly hot. Actual images of Venus's surface show a barren, extremely hot landscape. The planet's atmosphere, filled with CO2, essentially destroyed its chances of sustaining life as we know it. The carbon dioxide, CO2, on Venus came from volcanoes, and the first hints came from spacecraft orbiting the planet. Using radar, scientists managed to peer through Venus's thick clouds and spotted volcanic formations all across its surface. 
These formations closely resembled the shield volcanoes found on Earth. They're round and flat, and ooze lava for thousands of years. Once scientists were able to map Venus's entire surface using radar that could see through clouds, they started examining its landforms. They were surprised to find many similarities with Earth, especially when they observed huge shield volcanoes reminiscent of those in Hawaii. It was a revelation to see the first pictures of Venus, revealing a surface cratered with volcanoes. There are over 1,000 large volcanoes and possibly tens or hundreds of thousands of smaller ones on Venus. Lava plains cover about three quarters of the planet's surface, indicating a massive ancient eruption that transformed the landscape. What could have been a potential habitat for life was instead consumed by fiery eruptions. The volcanoes on Venus released trillions of tons of carbon dioxide into its atmosphere, causing a dramatic rise in temperature and the evaporation of its oceans. Unlike Earth, where carbon dioxide is absorbed into rocks and oceans, on Venus there's no water, and the temperature is too high for carbon dioxide to bind with minerals. As a result, the volcanoes continuously spewed carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, with fewer and fewer mechanisms available to remove it over time. This ultimately led to the sterilization of the entire planet by volcanoes. If we think about planets where life could have existed, Earth stands out as the only one where life is known to exist. Other planets, like the gas giant Jupiter and its moons, are thought to be icy and devoid of life. However, a mystery emerged when scientists noticed something strange happening on a seemingly cold and lifeless world. Venus. We'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching about Space Drift Documentary. Be sure to subscribe for more captivating journeys through the cosmos. With that being said, Take care, everyone.